So the paradigm uh, of looking of each episode of acute decompensate heart failure as if the treatment of the patient can, after the, uh, if we treat this patient, they can return to the natural history, such uh, similar to the other people with the chronic heart failure has changed. Each uh, episode of the acute decompensate heart failure is recognized as a, a, a major event, that it's a marker of a high risk and is significantly associated with increased mortality and morbidity. And as multiple studies have shown, every episode of acute decompensate heart failure and hospitalization is associated with increased mortality and increase <clears throat> exponentially of mortality and decreased survival. So let's uh, talk some facts about this heart failure. The acute decompensate heart failure is the most common cause of hospitalization in adult and older adult. 33% of these patients were really hospitalized within 60 to 90 days and 66% of these patients will either re-hospitalize or die within one year. And one out of six patients who are admitted with a heart failure will die in the 60 days. So when I talk, uh, think about the tools that we have to treat this patient, I think about three, uh, four, ways, uh, the four ways that these tools can work. These tools can be removers, they, which di they directly remove sodium and water, they can be dilator, which increase the venous capacitance and decreasing the afterload, and can be pullers. These are the tools which decreasing the renal venous pressure, and pushers. These are the these are the tools that they increase renal arterial pressures. The cornerstone of the treatment of a heart failure involves the management of the cardiac preload. Diuretic uh, therapy is the most commonly approached to the regulating cardiac preload and reducing congestion, and remain cornerstone of the congestion decongestion therapy. So with that, we, uh, I'll switch the gear a little bit and talk about some of the devices that's coming in this, uh, in this area. So the large, uh, large unmet need of and lack of significant progression and developing of effective pharmacotherapy in this, uh, pa in this patient for this patient population has stimulated an uh, interest in developing devices in this, de in this area. And this, some of these devices strategies that we use are focused on decreasing the venous pressures, increasing the renal arterial flow, selectively vasodilates renal artery, and remove excess fluid. So as we know, uh, with the uh, acute decompensated heart failure, the vasoconstriction of the splenic uh, vasculature redistributes uh, blood to the, cavity, to the thoracic cavity, which increases the systemic and pulmonary vaso uh, uh, venous pressure. So in this uh, uh, area, the, some of the uh, devices that are coming here, it was a proof of concept with the splenic HF1 uh, pilot study with this, this patient. The splenic nerve were blocked temporarily using the lidocaine, resulting in the reduction of the mean pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, mean arterial pressure, and increasing the cardiac index with improving the patient's symptom without causing systemic hypotension. This trials is enrolling right now, and it's a very, but it's very early in the stages, and the technology is getting uh, more uh, refined and uh, more practical. So sh uh, switching a uh, shift to the removals. These are the direct removal of the fluid uh, of uh, sodium, and, uh, sodium and, uh, and the water removal strategy, which has been uh, around for a long time. The aquapheresis by uh, ultrafiltration, peritoneal dialysis, and dialysis has been investigated. However, the data has been mixed. There were some advantages, such as net fluid loss, which was shown in the unload and avoid HF trial. However, this did not hold in the patient with the worsening of the renal function at the caress HF trial. This is my other son, Julian, in the construction worker outfit. So, so what are the, some of the new, new devices that are coming uh, in, in this area? There's a pump called Alpha Pump. This has been used in the patient with the cirrhosis and who are required uh, frequent uh, uh, paracentesis, and has been used to decreasing the need for the paracent frequent paracentesis. It's a fully implantable device, which is two catheters, one imp uh, implanted is a peritoneal, and the water in the, in the, in the bladder, and the, the sodium-free solution is infused into a peritoneal cavity, which removes the excess sodium, and the alpha pump returns this, uh, the, this fluid into the bladder, and patient urinates it. So therefore, decreasing the, removing the sodium directly. So where to go from here? So do not forget about the GDMT and the roles of the uh, setting an acute decompensate heart failure. Even though in the last few decades, our uh, focus has been mainly uh, on the decongestion of these patients, 
However, we have not taken advantage of the ad additive benefit of early GDMT and optitration of this. For the residents and fellows, uh, the young people here, this is Mr. T from the A team and AD shows, if you guys don't know. So the benefit of the uh, four pillar uh, uh, GDMT has been well established in the chronic heart failure as the grand run was uh, given here by Dr. Killison about a few weeks ago. There's no question that this, uh, this therapy worked for the patient with the chronic heart failure. These are our beta blockers, angiotensin receptor, naproxen inhibitors, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, um, aldosterone antagonists, and SGTL2 inhibitors. And by combination, there's a significant improvement of the symptom, mortality, benefit. However, the benefit and safety of these devices in the setting of acute decompensate heart failure and how aggressive we will titrate this is not well established. Recently, there has been multiple studies that have been looked as benefit and safety of these uh, strategies for optimizing and optitrating GDMTs early on in the setting of acute decompensated heart failure and in the setting of the decompensation.